Hi, it's Lipstick Owl. Thank you so much for watching today. I wanted to go through my April favorites with you. It's a little shorter this month. I haven't worn nearly as much makeup as I would normally wear, so it's going to be a little bit short, but we're going to talk about some other favorite things as well. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't, and uh, I will tell you my first favorite thing. I've talked about this several times. It has to be this. This is the Glossier Balm.com. This is the mango scent. I have another tube. This one's almost done. The other tube is like, I'd say it's maybe half gone, but since I've been here at home, like 99.9% .9 of the time, very rarely do I leave the house. I think since lockdown started in mid-March, I think I've left three times. <laughs> I've been uh, in the house the whole time. And so there have been a lot of me not wearing makeup. And on the days that I don't wear makeup, this is fantastic just to keep my lips hydrated. I tend to love the ones that are clear but have a fruit scent. So I love mango and I love coconut. Those are my two favorites. But this has been a kind of a lip saver for me. And the other thing I do at night is after I put on my eye cream, right before I kind of hit the pillow, I'll take a little bit of it, I'll pat it between two fingers, and then just hit right under here. And I use it kind of like an occlusive so that um, my eye cream has no place but in to go. It can't like be like evaporated into the air. Um, and I do have like a layer on top this way here just to make sure that I stay super hydrated and my under eyes have been looking really great. On the days that I have been wearing makeup, my favorite combo right now is this. This is the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer from ColourPop. I've been wearing this a lot on the days that I wear makeup, and I don't wear makeup every day, but I love this. Uh, I have the shade Fair 3W, and I have been pairing it with my favorite concealer of the moment, which is the Bare Minerals Bare Skin Complete Coverage Serum Concealer in the shade Fair. Now, I have fallen in love with this. I got it in September last year during an Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. I think this is a gorgeous concealer. It does a lot for me. It gives me coverage, but it's still hydrating, and I love it for that. And this combo together, the colors work well together as well as the overall hydrated kind of feel that it gives. Love these. Something else that I have been reaching for again that surprised me I hadn't reached for it in a long time, it's this. This is the Cloud Paint in the shade Beam from Glossier. I have it on my cheeks today. It's one of those products that is like you need very little of it. It's a liquid like this, and as you start to tap it out, it, it looks kind of intense, but it becomes the most beautiful kind of rosy flush. So what I do is I'll take it and uh, I'll tap it on, and I'll tap it exactly where I want it. Once I have it mostly blended, I'll finish it off with a sponge just to make sure that it's as blended into my skin as I can get it. And I love this shade. And I wear this, there are days that I'll wear concealer, brows, lipstick, and a little bit of this. No powder, nothing else. And I love it. Like my truly minimal makeup days, this has been making a reoccurring kind of like, it's been sitting here on my desk as opposed to in the blush drawer. Really do like this. This has been a hit ever since I picked it up. This is the Cover Girl Advanced Radiance Powder. This is beautiful. This is the shade 110 Creamy Natural. I think this is the lightest shade they have. This was a recommendation from Tati and I really like it. I find it does a really great job under my eyes. It does a great job around my nose. And it's one of those that, <laughs> let me show you one of the tricks that I do is I, I'll take the actual puff that comes with it. I'll kind of like turn it into like a little taco here and I'll press just the edge right there, hit the back of my hand and then I'll do this. And I find that when I do that, if my eyeshadow gets too low, that's kind of how I make sure that it's not lower than it needs to be and it helps to blend kind of like this area here and this kind of corner of the eye and up through the eyebrow going up this way kind of also helps to lift my eye because sometimes if I'm blending shadow and it gets too low here, I like doing that with this. I also find that during the day if I need to press in a little bit here, it's super easy and I've never been one to use like the puff that comes with the product but I've been using this a lot. I've already washed it a couple of times. Really like this. 
but absolutely adore this. This kind of surprised me. I, I've never been a big uh, primer person, but on the days that I've been wearing makeup, I've been using this primer from Benefit. It's the Porefessional Hydrate Primer. I used to use the original Porefessional, and then I kind of fell out of love with it. It wasn't quite like the best thing since sliced bread like I thought it had been originally, but since I've been using this one, it's like the only thing I've been reaching for. I like that it's hydrating, but it also fills in my pores and my skin looks really pretty afterwards. But I only use it on days that I wear makeup, so I haven't worn it a ton because it came in a recent BoxyCharm, but I've been I've been kind of impressed with it. I've been liking it and it's been working well for me. Brows are a little intense today. Normally, it's super easy. This month, I have just been reaching for this. This is the Hourglass Arch Brow Volumizing Fiber Gel. I've had this for a while. I picked it up last summer. Uh, I decided to do like a full face of Hourglass and I didn't have a brow product, so I picked this up. I love this. So what's interesting is that the brush has a really short bristle side and a long bristle side. So I use the short bristle side when I'm trying to lay down product and the long bristle side just to brush through and comb. So if I want more product distributed, I'll turn it to the shorter side and kind of lay it down where I want it. And then to make sure I don't have any clumps and that my hairs are standing up nicely, I'll use the longer bristle side and do that. I don't know that I should have done that without a mirror in front of me, but we'll just do the other side to make sure we're slightly even. But I like it. There's fibers in here. I usually start by back combing the back half of my brows just to lay down the product and to get the color and the fibers in here where I want them. And then I just go through but on days that it's concealer, a little bit of cloud paint, and um, uh, this is the brow product that I use, and then a really sheer lipstick, it go comes together really pretty, and it's, it's like me, but in color. And I feel like this is just enough to give my brows definition without making them too heavy today. They've got all sorts of stuff in them, but uh, normally during the week, it's a real quick like three minute makeup routine, concealer, lip gloss, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. And I'm like, oh, and there I am. <laughs> I am still here. <laughs> so I really have been liking this. When I have been wearing eyeshadow, I have been loving the little quads that I made for myself. Um, the packaging says Makeup Geek. These little cardboard quad containers were 50 cents a piece. And uh, this here, these are all ColourPop singles, but I love it. The other thing that I did is I drilled holes in the back and then if I need to, I'll just take um, like a spoolie like this and I can just press through the back and the shade just pops right out. And so if they're easy to change up, I haven't really needed to, but um, I like these quads. Other shadows I have, and I'm wearing today, I'm wearing the Enduring Love palette from Sydney Grace. I have been back in love with my Sydney Grace shadows. I have been using these a lot. This shade here is probably my favorite in the whole. It's Devotion. It's what I have kind of on my lid today. I love the foiled shades from Sydney Grace. They're gorgeous. So I really love this. The other thing I have here is I've got a magnetic palette just full of singles. All of the singles in here are all my Sydney Grace singles. I keep these separate because I feel like Sydney Grace is on a completely different level. I mixed up um, all the rest of my singles like this and I have like a ton of like little quads like this made up and they're all different. But I didn't want to because I love the formula and I love the way that they wear and blend so much from Sydney Grace more than any other single shadow that I have. I didn't want to put these in any of this packaging. I wanted to keep them separate so I knew where they were. So I've been using my little homemade quads a ton and I have also been loving the Sydney Grace Enduring Love palette as well as this right here. And um, these guys here are singles. These seven right here are singles, and then these nine here, Mountain Trail Bundle and Raspberry Kiss Bundle, and I love these. And if you get a chance to try these, I think you'd really enjoy them as well. One of my last things, it was kind of like a favorite, it was a discovery for me. Um, I have been using this PMD cleansing facial device for my face, but I've been having a hard time getting my makeup sponges clean. Uh, normally what happens is, I don't know if you can tell here, like I'll get like a little blob of makeup like in places and I'll get most of everything out but then that little dark spot will remain. And it could be 
liquid highlight, it could be um, foundation, concealer, it could be liquid contour, whatever it is, I find that it was hard. And this, this specific sponge here, I had the hardest time with. There still is a slight dark spot right here where I couldn't get makeup out of it, but my new favorite thing is, you know, get this wet, you know, kind of soap up the areas that I want to, and then I'll use this, I'll turn it on, and I'll just do this, and it comes out so quickly, and I have to spend like maybe one-fifth of the time I used to spend kind of like squeezing it, squeezing it, kind of like massaging the spots with the soap, trying to get it out. This like instantly, so if you have a little silicone facial cleansing device, doesn't have to be the PMD one, just any at all, take it to your sponges. It makes things super fast and it gets stuff out. It's like my favorite thing. There have been two shows that I've fallen in love with um, and I haven't finished either of them that I've been watching in the last several weeks when I get a chance on Netflix. One is called Money Heist. And Money Heist is about a group of bank robbers in Spain trying to rob the National Mint, uh, where they like make all the money. And it's, it's really interesting. And I do speak Spanish, uh, and I have lived in Spain for a couple of years, but it's been a long time. I haven't been to Spain, oh, like in 13 years. And I haven't lived in Spain in like 20 plus years. And so my Spanish is not really great. And so much slang changes that this is a modern enough um, TV show that so much of the slang is not stuff that I'm, I even know what it is. Like some of it I can catch because it reminds me of the type of slang I was, people were using when I was there 25 years ago in college. Um, but then a lot of it's like, wait, what, what, what? And it's going so fast. And Spaniards speak, and I know all Spanish speaking people can speak really fast, but they're just like tch, 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 to turn the subtitles on. So if you're not afraid of reading subtitles, I think the show is great. Um, it is violent, um, but there's a lot of interesting uh, relationships that happen. And there's one point where the narrator talks about this is a love story. And you see different relationships, and I'm, I start to wonder, oh, is it this story? Is it this story? Is it, and pretty soon it could be anybody that she's referring to. And it's really intriguing and I really enjoyed it. And it seems like it's super smart. So I have one season left. I've watched the first two seasons and I loved it. And I'm excited to continue finishing it. The other show that I really enjoyed, I got a recommendation from several people, was to watch Ozark. And I hadn't watched it. And it has Jason Bateman and Laura Linney. And I love both of them as actors. Again, it's another, can be uh, violent at times, uh, but a lot of it is just kind of like people in a desperate situation, What's it, what are they gonna do? And they move from a very, very, you know, urban place to like the middle of nowhere. Um, and it's very much, not just fish out of water, but also like in their desperate situation, what are they willing to do to save themselves? So it's an interesting, and, and I've been, it's kind of like, oh, wow, difficult at points, and then I just can't stop. I just have to keep watching. So those are the two things that I have been loving. Other thing that I have been loving, I started making um, a new variety of iced tea. I love drinking iced tea. Uh, my favorite right now is a green tea mint mix. So I'll do um, a couple of green tea tea bags and a couple of mint tea bags, let those steep in some hot water, and then I'll throw in a ton of ice to dilute it down and some water. And then right before I pour myself a, a big giant cup of, of this green tea mint, I'll put in just about a tablespoon of Tarani peach flavored syrup. And so it's a green tea mint with peach. It seems like a weird combination, but it's really refreshing. I really enjoy it. It's a combo that I started getting regularly at uh, Dutch Bros. Uh, they are my one of my local coffee shops that I love. They're a Pacific Northwest brand. Um, and I love Dutch Bros, but since I'm really not leaving the house right now, I had to figure out how to make it here at home, and it's actually really good, and it's super delicious. Um, but again, the peach syrup, you know, it's sugar, so <laughs> if you can find a different way to sweeten it, it might be better for you. Something else that I have fallen in love with, and I never would have discovered it if we had not gotten to this, like, lockdown situation, it's a grocery delivery service called Imperfect Foods. I signed up for it uh, right as lockdown started in mid-March 
and it took about two weeks before they were able to send me my first box. Um, but they, the whole idea of imperfect foods are grocery items that cannot be sold at grocery stores because they're shaped in, in like too large, too small. They look a little misshapen. Food's still good. Or there's too much of it. There's too much and we can't sell it all at the grocery store. So we're going to give it to this other company and they will sell it. Uh, sometimes maybe the, if it's a, a product that comes in a package, the packaging, like the, the printing for the packaging is not exactly perfect and they don't want to sell it at the store. So the whole idea of imperfect foods is there's something just a little bit wrong enough with it that they're not going to send it to a, like a large grocery store to sell it. And you get beautiful produce shipped right to your door for a remarkable price. Um, I get the 20 pound box of produce and I'm getting avocados, uh, all sorts of citrus, apples, um, cilantro, lettuce, uh, purple organic potatoes, um, cauliflower, uh, and, and you can choose. And that's the great thing. There are other produce deliveries where it's kind of like a mystery box. We're going to send you what we have and here you go. But in Perfect Foods, you have a window of opportunity every week where you can go through and customize what you want sent in your box. And you have to meet like a $30 minimum every week. But I always go over that. And we've eaten everything in the box every time it comes. Uh, I'm getting cabbage this week, uh, cauliflower, uh, purple organic potatoes, limes, little mini bell peppers, lettuce, green onions, regular onions, like all sorts of things, a ton of fruit. My kids have been going through fruit like crazy. They love the pears, they love the honey crisp apples, they love the tangelos. So I haven't had to go out, I have enough like stuff that's non-perishable in the house. The one thing that I was worried that I wasn't gonna have enough of was produce. And it's nice to have produce delivered straight to my door. And it's shipped to FedEx and it comes in a large box and there is a giant slab of ice at the bottom that keeps all of your produce beautifully cold the whole way there. So I will tell you that's like one of the things that I have fallen in love with and I might just continue, you know, once everybody's back to normal life and we don't have to find ways to get things shipped to the house because we're trying not to leave, I might still do this just to take kind of like I can grocery shop from my phone for like 10 minutes and then, you know, four days later it shows up on my doorstep and I can kind of anticipate what I'm getting. And I think it's, it's you know, using food that would normally be wasted. Um, it helps to uh, use up products that are still good but that, you know, they're not gonna sell at grocery stores. I feel good about that. But then on top of it, the, not having to go grocery shopping. Like right now, I'd love to get out of the house for any reason, but, uh, in the normal everyday sort of flow, grocery shopping is one of my least favorite chores to do. And if I can sit there and spend 10 minutes on my phone and decide I want this, 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 and this sent to my box, uh, yes. They also do meat. I have some chicken thighs coming this week. Um, they do dairy products. Um, I've seen milk and cheese and other things like that. They also do, I think, alternative milks. I've seen oat milk and hemp milk and coconut milk and things like that. So there's a whole bunch of different things that they offer at Imperfect Foods. And I don't know, I think it's great. Now, I don't know if you're gonna be able to like sign up today and have a box in a week, because normally it takes a while. And with everybody looking to get groceries delivered, I know that there is there has been a delay for a lot of people. I had to wait almost two and a half weeks from signing up until I received my first box, but since then it's been weekly and it's been fantastic and I really like it. My family likes that um, there's some produce coming that they never would have had before. We had um, orange cauliflower. <laughs> and that would be one of those things would be expensive enough at the grocery store. I'm like, if the regular cauliflower, I'm not you know, spending the extra two bucks for the orange cauliflower. But my kids were like, what, orange cauliflower? Or like the bright, dark, purpley blue potatoes. I've had those before, but they're not like an all the time sort of thing, but they love that some of these interesting or like tri-colored carrots show up. They, they love it. So it's been really a great thing for me. Um, and I'm probably gonna continue with it. I think it's great. So there you go. Those are my favorites for April. Let me know what your favorites have been, whether it's makeup, whether it's uh, something new you figured out for yourself, uh, a show that you're watching, an activity that you're doing, a recipe that you've tried that you've loved, 
or um, just things that make your life easier, I would love to know in the comments down below. Have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.